I don't think the Red Sea confrontation is what will create a regional war. It's the persistence of Israel's barbaric slaughter in Gaza and the determination of allies of the Palestinians who see this kind of breach of international law as grossly unacceptable, going way beyond self-defense, uh, and which have their own quarrels with Israel, particularly Hezbollah. I think the danger comes from that. And raids by uh, British forces against the Yemeni mainland might lead to retaliation against British forces. It might lead to attacks on British forces elsewhere. Uh, but I don't think the British government wishes to go so far as to risk bringing Iran directly into the conflict. Could 2024 see the conflict in the Middle East widen? With the conflict raging in Israel and Gaza, and even including <coughs> excuse me, Hezbollah on Israel's border with Lebanon to the north, should we also be concerned about what's happening with these Houthi attacks in the Red Sea? Remember, there was recently concern about the Israeli-backed Houthis in Yemen attacking container ships and uh, oil tankers in the Red Sea. In the past 24 hours, the US say that it's destroyed several boats operated by Houthis. The move by US Navy helicopters was in response to an attempted hijacking of a Danish container ship operated by Maersk, who have suspended sailings now in the Red Sea temporarily. The UK Defence Secretary, Grant Shapps, for his part, writes in the Telegraph this morning that the UK is considering airstrikes on Houthis. We would not hesitate to take direct action, he writes. Well, let's go live to Sir Richard Dalton, Associate Fellow at Chatham House's Middle East and North Africa programme. He's a former UK ambassador to Iran. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Uh, what do you make of this threat from, from Grant Shapps and the expected US-UK joint statement, which we're told uh, we should be expecting, a verbal final warning? I think it's what we would have expected if the uh, civil war in Yemen continues to rage. And if, as a byproduct of that and long-standing hostility between Yemen and Israel, uh, these attacks on shipping in the Red Sea uh, continue, mm. uh, it's uh, seen by the Houthis uh, and their uh, Iranian uh, suppliers of, of weaponry uh, as a way of opening a small additional front uh, in the resistance against what Israel does uh, not just in Gaza, but elsewhere in the Middle East. And retaliation by the naval forces was to be expected once a naval force had been gathered mm. in the Red Sea by the United States and others. And as um, Grant Shapps highlights, we've already got um, HMS Diamond there, and there's the option to move HMS Lancaster, a Type 22 frigate operating in the Gulf to the Red Sea to support it. HMS Diamond's already shot down um, a Houthi attack drone. But if they actually move to airstrikes, as is potentially on the cards, how big a, an escalation would that be? Are, are you worried that that could broaden the conflict that we're already seeing around Israel, Gaza? Or is this arguably business as usual, something we should be doing, uh, things that might have happened it's in not, the past? It's not business as usual. Uh, and it's something we've chosen to do because we tend to act alongside the United States, if the United States uh, requests us to do so, uh, albeit in a small way, in relation to the force which the United States can bring to the region. It's certainly not business uh, as usual. Uh, we would expect UK naval assets to come under additional attack, of course, uh, if we take action on land against sites which we think are associated with attacks on shipping. So it could get very nasty, but I don't think it's a factor in exacerbating the real danger points, which are, of course, Gaza, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Israeli border with Lebanon. Mm. What is the logic of the Houthis in starting this campaign of, of attacking container ships and well, commercial ships in solidarity with with Hamas and Israel. Is this opportunism, opportunism rather, or do you see this as, as part of a sort of broader Iranian strategy as directly directed from them? Um, Iran uh, influences but does not control. Mm. Uh, some people think Iran could stop these attacks uh, by cutting off supplies but that's rather parallel with the discussions about 
whether or not the United States could stop the barbaric slaughter in Gaza by cutting off supplies to Israel. Uh, neither the United States nor Iran seem inclined uh, to do that. Um, the hostility to Israel shown by Yemen, uh, including the group that controls the capital, Sana'a, and the majority of the territory of the country, that's uh, referred to as Houthis, but the full name of the movement is Ansar Allah. Uh, that hostility dates back years, and they have a history of taking independent decisions about what they do with the force uh, at their command. I think they believe that it's pretty cost-free for them uh, to show their solidarity uh, with Iran and those confronting Israel from within the Palestinian territories. Mm. Uh, it remains to be seen whether that analysis is true given the increasing bellicosity of those who want to stop attacks on shipping. Uh, and just finally, do you are you saying that, that then you don't fear this if this plays out, the UK actually engaging in direct airstrikes within Yemen on um, Houthi you know, uh, positions doesn't risk us dragging Iran into the conflict directly. The um, the editorial in The Telegraph, where Grant Shapps is, is writing his piece today, um, has said that the, the diplomatic and military conundrum at the start of this year is whether it will be possible to continue taking a stand against Iran without triggering a direct conflict with it. D do you fear that, or, or do you think you're actually, we're actually far away from that possibility? I don't think the Red Sea confrontation is what will create a regional war. It's the persistence of Israel's barbaric slaughter in Gaza and the determination of allies of the Palestinians who see this kind of breach of international law as grossly unacceptable, going way beyond self-defense, uh, and which have their own quarrels with Israel, particularly Hezbollah. I think the danger comes from that. And raids by uh, British forces against the Yemeni mainland might lead to retaliation against British forces. It might lead to attacks on British forces elsewhere. Uh, but I don't think the British government wishes to go so far as to risk bringing Iran directly into the conflict because that would be a disastrous expansion of the current mm. appalling situation. So, Richard, good to talk to you this morning. Thank you for your time. It's Richard Dalton, Associate Fellow at Chatham House, a former UK ambassador to Iran as well.